or comorbidities refer to disorders that are alongside. So they are a separate disorder. The secondary uh, results could be the result okay. of the of the disorder itself. So there are several disorders that have overlap that are not the same. Take, for example, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, and autism. Both are both individuals may present as inattentive, impulsive, and have challenges with communication. But autism is a standalone disorder characterized by repeated stereotyped behavior, social pragmatic communication challenges, language challenges, and a host of other criteria. Attention deficit hyperactivity refers to inattention, restlessness, impulsivity, and or. All right. So coming out of ADHD, you might have several secondary challenges, which include uh, academic challenges. So if you're not finishing your exams, if you are not handing in your, your um, assignments, if you are making errors while you're working. So for example, if you have a multi-step math problem and you've just done first step, second step, and you get distracted, oh, I've done it, I'm going on to the next one, then you're not going to get that sum right. It's not that you didn't know how to do it, but the, in the planning and execution, the executive function that you needed to have those skills, you, the person forgot to do the last step. When it comes to attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and other neurological disorders, there is a huge genetic component. And many times when we actually are able to diagnose and intervene with one child, one person, there have been generations before that didn't get that help. So we have systematic trauma in the family where there's a lot of blame and there's a lot of reactivity. And to some degree, I, sus I suppose that if it could be chalked up to just hard and badly behaved, we don't care, then there's also that sense or of empowerment, right? So if he wants to, he can change. Versus something that's neurological, which may instill a sense of hopelessness or helplessness, which should not be the case because there's a lot that can be done, which is where the psychoeducation comes in. But it starts with intervention, and it starts with psychoeducation, and it starts with understanding, and it starts with acceptance. Uh, and then from there, this is what you can do. If we empower one parent to help his or her child, then we change the course of the generations to come. Proactivity is the key, but we are so reactive as a society, especially coming out of COVID, um, that oftentimes we have blinders on and we don't see where we're actually hurting. And when we talk about denial, that's a worry brain reaction, fight, flight, or freeze. So when we're triggered, we're either blaming a child or blaming each other, you know, avoiding it, no, 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 not seeing, freezing, I don't know what to do. But if we can manage and recognize that we're anxious and use our techniques, mindfulness, and, and, and just to be a little gentle with ourselves, then we can be proactive by using the thinking brain instead. Audience is your girl, Giselle Mary Juanita Alvarez. The whole, the president of the Red Woman Association coming to you. Well, here what's going on now? Well, you always meet him everywhere, in the market, in the taxi, wherever I go. Tell him, when all you're doing new thing, we want new work. Well, to do the new work, we need money. So here what? Go to all our channels on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to go to our webpage causeandeffect.co and press that donate button and donate us so we could keep bringing all of this educational content. See you soon.